Happy Sabbath to everyone. May the Lord bless us and be with us and through the Holy Spirit to give us uh, today another opportunity to open the Word of God and to benefit of this. It's our privilege, it's our great blessing in the Sabbath day to, to learn from our Lord. So for today, I'm looking, it's been a while that it was our last uh, meeting, I mean face to face from this uh, position, and I believe many changes took place in our life. Uh, maybe time to time we can see that the time is flying, even with this different news, even Sister Aurora has been with us for a while and now is departing. So uh, I believe even our life is flying as well. So that's why the Lord is, uh, is always willing, watching, ready to, to guide us and uh, instruct us to know what is the most important in our life. And I believe for today is a very important topic. We'll not be finishing this topic today. We'll just touch or make an introduction for this topic. But it's good to review and to keep in mind that we have a mission. And my question to me and to you in the same time, do we know what is God's mission for us? If not, don't, don't be worried. I know we are not the first. But the Lord is willing, if we open our, our eyes, to reveal to us what is our mission on planet Earth. So, uh, according with the Psalm 25, verse 14, the verse says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Why God is revealing the, the secret to me and to you? For Why do you think? Is there any condition here or mention in the verse? To whom is the Lord willing to reveal? To the people that fear him, that they love him, that they worship him, that they, they trust in him as being only the only one that is able, as we learn today, to redeem us and to translate us in his heavenly kingdom. So, more than that, it's because God knows you and loves you. Maybe these are simple words that you are used to, to hear this. But when we open our heart and say to the Lord, as Psalmist David said, Psalm 139, verse 1, O Lord, Thou hast searched me and known me. My dear friends, we are living here in the time when the people, they, they are concerned about their privacy. They, are, uh, they have a lot of fear not to, be, to have a transparency, I mean, to, to be open. But when you open your heart to the Lord, the Lord will know you. And the, the primary calling for all of us is to know him and to be known by him. Uh, the Lord is promising to us through Apostle Paul. Let's open our Bible in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. And let's see what is the purpose that the Lord wants to, to tell us uh, about his mission. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. I believe for many other topics that we are discussing, even I, I was surprised that we discuss in the Sabbath day different other topics that we are interested in, and we, we pay attention. I expect you to pay attention for a little while in this time at the divine service and try to be, to be awake. Because I will ask again, do we know what is 
his plan, mission, or his purpose for our lives. Yes or not? If not, why not? What is our conversation for? If I'll bring another topic, for example, uh, do we know how to invest our goods better? What do you think? Do we know how to discuss about that? Are you up to date? What is the best investition in this world? How to uh, benefit of that or not? My dear brethren, I believe now we cannot say anything, but God knows our heart if we open our hearts. And he knows what is our mind focused on. And I will say to you, if we are, uh, you know, very careful how to invest our money, our goods, and everything in this life, I'm not saying it's something wrong. And we, if we are looking for the best benefit, the best interest, and best you know, gain, maybe we think about ourselves that we are wise. I'm just asking what will be at the end with our, what will happen with the, our investition at the end? Is can we compare the interest rate with what the Lord will offer at the end if we invest everything that we have and we are in heavenly kingdom? My dear friends, if we don't know, if we don't know what is the God's plan to, uh, for us, if we didn't ask yet, I, I would like to remind you that in my ears is still sounding and I can hear the echo that Brother Dalibor just preached months ago when he asked all of us, why am I here? What is the purpose that I am here? We are in the church to hear the word of God, to understand the will of God, and I believe we would like to know what is the mission of God for us. If we trust in the Lord, we can open our hearts. And trusting in the Lord is the best thing to start with. If uh, we think about, oh, you know what, coming to the church is one thing. My particular life is another thing. Uh, I like to, to fear God, but you know, I, I have my business. I would like to take care of what I have as well. That if we are not saying with words, but that will reflect that we fear to trust in the Lord. When he said, seek first what? And all those things will be added unto you. You think God is saying something that is not fulfilling by his word? My dear friends, I trust in the Lord and I would like to hear from him, not maybe in a few words, but we will be able to understand his plan on the years that will come, on the days that will come, the months. But first of all, I would like to mention to you and read from the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, uh, counsel to the church, page 345, paragraph 2. God is too wise to err and too good to withhold any good thing for his saints that walk uprightly. And more than that, he gives us the things that are for our best good and his own glory. Let me tell you something. Sometimes even the, the uh, young people, and we in 
our life. We are a little bit reserved. We stay a little bit, I mean, we have the reluctant attitude that we, we think about, oh, you know what? I'm looking for my happiness. And I'm, I'm looking for my best in this life. Maybe if I'm so, so much into the religion or uh, I, I'm involved too much in the business of God, then uh, I will not be that happy. What is the spirit of prophecy saying here? He is giving us the things that are, are for our best good. First, for our happiness. And then for his glory. We are created to be happy. And to have happiness. At superlative. So when you think that God has a mission for you to be not happy. That is a big mistake. Do not fear to be involved in the mission that God has for you. Because is that, that is for your own good and the best good, and for me as well. He is too wise to err, and too good to retain, to keep back the goods that we need the best. So, I have another question to you. Do you like the idea that the Lord Jesus Christ is going to prepare a place for all of us? I like that too. So, but before thinking about the places in the heavenly place, have you ever thought about that even describing the, uh, the, I mean, the word of God is describing this and also the spirit of prophecy, that we have a place here on earth as a special place for each one of us. Do you agree with this idea? Do you like that? So, if we have this opportunity, then... According to the spirit of prophecy is written, every man has his place in eternal plan of heaven. Whether we'll fill the place depends upon our own faithfulness in cooperating with God. Ministry of Health 477. So if we want to, to take our place and be involved in the mission that God has for us, depends on us and our own faithfulness and if we want to cooperate with the Lord. But as I said in the beginning, that must be uh, uh, based on our trust in the Lord. Do we trust in the Lord that he knows the best for all of us? Amen. So, God invites you to take part in this, the greatest, largest, and most significant thing in the history, the restoration of his kingdom. So maybe now you are looking what will be the, the interest, the benefit, the privilege, because you, you have not something visible here. But when you go to the people that they advise you in the financial matter or something like that, do they bring the, the things in your hand the first time? Or they will promise this will be the rate of the interest. So if you believe that, you'll have. There is not comparison between the, this world that will promise you something as a benefit and what the Lord promised to you at the end. Nothing is comparing with that. Your life's mission is related to this plan. And you need to discover your specific place for this. So let's look into the scripture. A whole scripture in um, Gospel according John. Chapter 17 verse 18. The Lord Jesus Christ said about the, in his prayer, he made a statement that he knew his mission, he mentioned about his mission, and he said, how is our mission? How he will send us? As thou hast sent me into the world, 
Even so, have I also sent them into the world. What? This is what the Lord says about his mission and how he used the, this method with us. So uh, let's move into the word of God and read in book of Acts, Acts of Apostles. And uh, chapter 20, verse 24. Let's see later on how Apostle Paul understood the mission that the Lord has for him and the ministry that the Lord gave him. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. So he recognized later on that even though he was not present when the Lord Jesus Christ sent the disciples, he received this personally from God. My question to you and to me, do we feel that we received this mission, this ministry, that the Lord sent us with a specific purpose in this world or not? Thank you. Like I mentioned in the beginning, if you think that you don't know your mission, don't worry. We are not the first. And we'll, meet, we'll be uh, through the, the power of the Lord, to the Holy Spirit, will be revealed unto us if we open our heart. So uh, I found that sometimes we don't know exactly what to do for the Lord, what will be our place, and because we don't know exactly, Maybe we stay a little bit just watching from outside, not getting involved. But the Lord wants to tell us that inside of our being, there are dormant powers that need to be awakened to life, qualities that are hidden and that must bring, be brought to the light. Let's see how the Lord Jesus Christ starts to give the mission to his first disciples. Let's open the Bible in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straight away left their nets and followed him. How do you see this? Is a miracle? Is something that surprised them? Is something that just happened in that moment? I'm just thinking like, in this life of the disciples, they were believers before, right? Yes or no? They were looking for the, the coming of Messiah, of the Messiah. And I believe in their heart, somewhere, the thoughts of their meditation, day and night, were just dormant. Saying, we don't know exactly when will be that. When will be the time that we are not pleased with this world. We are not pleased. Is this attitude ours? Yes, we are not pleased in this world. And sometimes we are not pleased with the situation we, where we are in. But we need this touch of the Holy Spirit or the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to say directly to me and to you, follow me. I need you. And you are doing this, I'll give you another job better than this. So they heard in their, at the, the time, that this is an invitation that you're looking for. Right away, they let everything, I mean, straight away left their nets and follow him. So let me add some comments from the spirit of prophecy in this regard. In the common walks of life, there is many a man patiently treating to round of daily toil, unconscious that he possesses power which, if called into action, would raise him to an equality 
with the world most honored men. It was such men that Jesus called to be his collaborators, and he gave them the advantage of association with himself. Never had the world's great men such a teacher. When the disciples came forth from the Savior training, they were not longer ignorant and uncultured. They had become like him in mind and character, and men took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Is this your concern that we cannot be now uh, representing correct the character of the Lord Jesus Christ? We have not enough knowledge to go and do the mission that the disciples went to? Don't worry. Those people spend a little bit of time with the Lord Jesus Christ and then they're not supposed to say, well, I'm a disciple of, Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ. No, they, they, they don't introduce themselves. But the people, they say, oh, you must be one of his followers. Why? Because your character, your, your knowledge and everything. Christ discerned the possibilities in every human being. Are we included in this or not? Yes. He was not turned aside by an, uh, an unpromising exterior or by unfavorable surroundings. He called Matthew from the tool booth and Peter and his brethren from his, uh, the fishing boat to learn of him. So maybe you are not at this time the right person for the right mission. But don't worry. The Lord Jesus Christ is not looking to that. What is now in your life is looking what you can become through His Holy Spirit. And He can transform you. Do you believe that? I believe with all my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ can transform us and make us fitted for the mission that He has for us. So, my invitation to you and my prayer to you and to me Stop for a while and think and meditate upon the word of God because the Lord is going to reveal your life's mission. Maybe it could be in different ways, but for sure, for every one of us, the Lord has a plan, a mission. So maybe it's not like in the time when the disciples were called. We saw two brothers they are called just when they were working. Then we have another example. Let's open our Bibles in John chapter 1, verse 50. We know that there was a brother of Philip, Nathaniel, and he, he was praying and came and said, Hey, come on, can something, something be uh, good here in Galilee or from Nazareth. And the brother said, come and see. Convince yourself. And Lord Jesus Christ told him what he saw before and said, when he, he heard that, he said, oh, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus answered and said unto him, because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree. Believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than this. So your mission will be great than this. If you believe only that I am the prophet, I am the Messiah, so it's a good thing. Let's start and your mission will be larger than this. Then we, we have another example, Acts chapter 9. We know that Apostle Paul was stopped at the time Saul, was stopped by the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, Saul, Saul, why you persecuted me? And the the disciple, I mean, at the time, Saul said, Who art thou? Lord, I don't know. And later on, let's read in uh, chapter 9, verse 15. He was sent, he saw in vision the, the man that uh, it was going to help him to regain his sight, a vision. But Ananiah was afraid to speak. With this man, he said, Lord, you know this was persecuting the church. I don't trust him. 
What says the Lord? No. You know your mission because I know what I'm calling this gentleman for. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For, for I will show, show him how great things he must suffer by my for my name's sake. The Lord has a mission for this man. He didn't know it at the time. Let's see how Apostle Paul is speaking later on. He was not sorry. He was pleased with that. Because even in that time when he was called by the Lord and went to Ananias' house, he started to understand what is his mission, what is the plan of the Lord for him. Let's uh, open our Bibles in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, 16, and 17. But when it pleases God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the hidden, immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. Another translation and dictionary said, I did not take counsel with men, with uh, human beings. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went into Arabia and returned again into Damascus. So he didn't stop to think about. He was sure that the Lord called him to, to give his mission and uh, to show him, to reveal him what is the plan for, for him. So uh, the best example that we can see uh, what is uh, when the Lord wants to reveal his mission to us, is in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said before Pilate, for this moment, I came here to fulfill. And he knew this, his mission even while he was a child. Let's open our Bibles in chapter 2, uh, Gospel according to Luke, and verse 49. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me? Wist it not that I must be about my father's business? Well, we cannot say today that a teenager can understand very well the mission of his, of his life or her life. But maybe can be true that. According with the knowledge that he received, Till that time, he went to the temple. And I, will, I would like to share with you a, a short paragraph from uh, Desire of Ages. With most of the people in the days of Christ, the observance of the, this feast had degenerated in the formalism. But what was the significance to the Son of God? Desire of Ages, page 79. For the first time, the child Jesus looked upon the temple. He saw the white-robed priest performing their solemn ministry. He beheld the bleeding victim upon the altar of sacrifice. With the worshippers, he bowed in prayer while the cloud of incense ascended before God. He witnessed the impre impressive rites of the Paschal service. Day by day, he saw their meaning more clearly. Every act seemed to be bound up with his own life. New impulses were awakened with, within him. Silent and absorbed, he seemed to be studying out a great problem. The mystery of his mission was opening to the Savior. My dear friends, we need to start to ask the Lord, and our children, they need to start to ask the Lord, what is my mission, even at this time? But if we miss that, it's not too late to ask today. If we are coming to the church and everything that is performing here will not make any impression upon our minds. If we are singing and praising the Lord, if we are reading the word of God, is not making any impression upon our hearts. We are not opening our eyes. We are not enlightened to see 
as the Lord Jesus Christ. Day by day, he saw their meaning more clearly. He saw from day to day how the Lord is giving the tasks, the mission, and the plan for him. So let us discover, if it's possible, let's look how to discover our mission and our plan, I mean, the Lord's plan in our life. But before going to that, I would like to share with you that we need to uh, consider few facts that are more important before we start. And let, let, that, let us see uh, that in the life of the, the one of uh, the students of Apostle Paul, I'm talking about the young man, Timothy. So this disciple says, first of all, he said to him, neglect not the gift that is in thee. You believe that we are here by chance? Were the Holy Spirit put in our mind to be here? Do you believe that you receive a gift from the Holy Spirit or not? Has the Holy Spirit for every one of us gifts? Of course, yes. So, if we, at the end, we would like to excuse ourselves, you know, I didn't understand my mission, I didn't understand uh, what is your plan with me, you cannot excuse, it's written in Hebrews chapter 2, that uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His own will was witnessing in our life. We cannot escape of that. And the Lord is sending spiritual gifts to everyone that is open to receive. Please consider this. Do not neglect the gift that is in thee. Second, let's consider how is the state of our heart. Because our heart is the source of all our motivation. What we love, the things that we love, are there. So we may, might understand the truth, the present truth, in the intelligible way. But if we have no love, we will just learn in the Bible lesson today, right? What is the most important thing in our life? To see the lack of love. So, uh, in... Holy Scripture, we find a verse that is telling us something very interesting. Let's open our Bibles in Job, chapter 15, verse 12. And it's written there, Why doth thine heart carry thee away? And what do thy eyes wink at? So, what is the meaning of this verse? You understand, you know that you are called by the high calling of the Lord, and to, to have a place, a mission in His plan, but sometimes your heart, your pleasure, that are in your heart, your motivation in everything, will carry you away. Is this normal? No. This is carnal mind. This is not the heart that is renewed by the Lord. This is the carnal mind. Let us, the Lord, consider this. If we want to, to, the, the Lord to reveal to us his mission to, for us, let's consider these steps before, I mean factors. And then the Lord says, My son, give me thine heart and let thy eyes observe my ways. And the New Testament, Apostle Paul will, te will teach the people in this way as well. Colossians, uh, Colossians uh, chapter 3 and verse 23. Um, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Why? Why is this verse here? My dear friends, you can lie to me, and I cannot know that. I can lie to you, you cannot know that. I can tell you I love you, but not, I'm not loving you. And you cannot know that. But Lord, know everything. Will search your heart and say, no, I'm sorry. Say that again. And then, as Apostle Paul, he was, he, he was asked three times, right? Do you love me? 
we will say, you know everything, Lord. So Romans chapter 12 as well, uh, verse 7 and 8. If somebody will ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth, wait for that teaching. And so, and so on and so forth. So, uh, then we can clearly see if our heart is in, in, a, in one accord with, uh, with the Lord. Because then we can see fulfilling this, uh, this word of God in our life. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. Be aware of your abilities, talents that you are born with or you receive. And also, let's see uh, what Apostle Paul said. The specific, I mean, I'm reading first in the spirit of prophecy and then we'll go to what Apostle Paul uh, said about himself. Education chapter, uh, no, page 233. The specific place appointed us in life is determined by our capabilities. Not all reach the same development or do with equal efficiency the same work. God does not expect the He's up to attain the proportions of the cedar or the olive to hang on the stately palm. But each should aim just as high as the union of human with the divine power makes it possible for him to reach. <clears throat> so Apostle Paul understood this later on. Let's see how he explained this. Galatians chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, see the difference here? One was more fitted for one class, another one was more fitted for the other class. For he that wrote effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James Cephas and John, who seem to be the pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the hidden and they unto the circumcision. Uh, unto the circumcision. So then we can see that the, our talents, we're supposed to watch what the Lord gave to us and uh, what is our abilities. And more than that, let's watch our personality. That will affect, will affect the way of using your spiritual gifts and abilities as well. It's written in Genesis chapter 49. It's uh, describing the, the people of Jacob. Reuben is unstable as water. If we are not tempered, sometimes will affect our action, our mission. We need to ask the Lord, Lord, you know that I am in this way. Please transform me. And also, Simeon and Levi are brethren, instruments of cruelty, <coughs> are in their habitation. For in their anger, they slew a man. Of course, again, we have to ask the Lord. Because he knows our, uh, our personality. So, I will uh, not go further. Because, uh, as I said before, uh, let's read in uh, Ministry of Healing page 483 we differ so widely in disposition our ideas in regard to the conduct of life uh, habits education that our ways of looking at things vary we judge differently so uh, and also let's consider our personal experience according with the spirit of prophecy in the same book there are not two whose experiences are alike in every particular. And you can tell that. We don't have the same experience. So the trials of one are not the trials for another. The duties that one finds light are to another most difficult and perplexing. So maybe we can review this later in another time. 
But now let's be focused on what the Lord requires for the mission that he is presenting to us. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found how? Faithful. Because he that is faithful in that which, which is less is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. My dear friends, the time is flying. And I know that we cannot finish now. Maybe we'll have another chance to discuss about God's mission in our life. What I would like to uh, share with you is we need to follow more closely God's plan in our life. To do our best in the work that lies nearest to us. To commit our ways to God and to watch for the indication of his providence. These are the rules that ensure safe guidance. And uh, I would like to share a few thoughts about the Lord Jesus Christ from uh, book uh, Christ Object Lessons. He who came from heaven to be our example spent nearly 30 years of his life in common mechanical labor. My question to you, did he know about his mission? From when? What was the time? Twelve years old. He started to know. And he continued to work in common mechanical labor. Maybe you are, you don't feel that the Lord called you to do something today. But during this time, are you thinking about his mission? So, but during this time, he was studying the word and the words of God and helping, teaching all whom his influence could reach. When his public ministry began, he went about healing the sick, comforting the sorrowful, and preaching the gospel to the poor. This is the work of all his, of all his followers. However lowly and any work done for God will be a full surrender of self. It is acceptable to him as the highest service. No offering is more that is given with true hardness and gladness of soul. Wherever ye may be, Christ bides us take up the duty that presents itself. Now, let's put our finger on the points. Maybe we, we cannot understand the mission that the Lord has for, for us. But few words from the spirit of prophecy will address to your heart and to my heart. Please listen carefully to this. It's the last statement that we'll share. If the mission, if it's this in the home, Maybe you are not involved in the missionary work. You are not in an evangelistic work. But if your mission is in the home, take hold willingly and earnestly to make home a pleasant place. How many people in the modern society are taking very serious this? How many children leave home because it's not a pleasant place? How many get separated because it's not a pleasant place? How do you feel could be this your mission? It's not a great one, but it's very important. It has the place in God's world. If you are a mother, train your children for, for Christ. This is verily a work for God as is that of the minister of the pulpit. There, are no, uh, there is no guarantee that a 
a minister can teach the, the children to become followers of Christ. Always. But a faithful mother will do a miracles for the Lord. The Bible is full of these uh, experiences. The role of the mother is great. If your duty is in the kitchen, seek to be a perfect cook. Do you believe this is a mission? In a small place, humble place, you will learn how to cook and to do the most healthy food. And you are there studying as the Lord Jesus Christ for 30 years made this every day the routine. When he heard, now is the time, go public and speak and teach the people. Start your mission where you are. Ask the Lord, what should I do, Lord, here in this place? What do you want me to do here? Teach me, Lord. Prepare food that will be helpful, nourishing and appetizing. As you employ the best ingredients in preparing food, remember that you are to give your mind the best thoughts. And combining the knowledge, the theory with the practice, you will become a, a servant for the Lord. If your mission is to work or to till the soil or to engage in any other trade of, or occupation, Make success of this present duty. Put your mind on what you are doing. In all work, represent Christ. As every man has received the gift, even so minister to the same, the same one to another as good stewards of manifold grace of God. So if you are a student in school, Think about that no one, no other one is in your place. And no other one will have the same opportunity that you have. I saw that in my experience, in, in ex life experience. You will never be able to meet the people that the Lord just uh, brought in contact with you. And maybe that will not be, uh, uh, I mean, the next opportunity for you. I'll conclude with this. In every place that you are, in a kitchen, as a mother, as a teacher, as an instructor, as a minister, at the workplace, as an advisor, as a father, as a mother, as a friend, as a colleague, as a co-worker. Do the things and the mission as he would do in your place. Can you say amen for this? Are you willing to do the things as he will do in your place? Start with this thought. When it's hard for you to fulfill the mission, ask yourself how the Lord Jesus Christ will do this. And the Holy Spirit will answer to you. Looking to his example, you'll be able to understand how to fulfill your mission. However small your talent, God has place for it. That one talent, wisely used, will accomplish its appointed work. By faithfulness in little duties, we are to work on the plan of addition. And God will work for us on the plan of multiplication. Do you understand this? This is the best plan of investment. The Lord will multiply it. The, these littles will become the most precious influence of, in His work. It is those who perform faithfully their appointed work day by day, who in God's own time will hear his call, come up higher and come and inherit the kingdom of heaven. 
Are you prepared for this? Do, do we believe that in the small things our mission can start now? Don't think about we, we have to do great things. We have this example for the spirit of prophecy. If you are in the place you are, that's the place for you. Start in that place. And when the time the Lord will, will have his time for you to do something greater than that, he will show to you. May the Lord help us to understand and to follow his plan in our life day by day, having faithfulness and he will be with us and honor because we will honor him. Amen.